27 members of the River State House of Assembly loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesam Wike, have threatened to resume the impeachment process against the state governor, Seminalai Fubara, if necessary. The lawmakers, led by the Speaker, said at a press briefing in Port Harcourt, the state capital, that they would not hesitate to sack the governor if he does not change his ways. The lawmakers, in a statement by the Speaker and 26 other members, accused Governor Fubara of committing acts of misconduct. For this conversation, we now turn to Dr. Lilonu Nguibubasa, the former Commissioner for Employment Generation and Economic Empowerment under Wiki. He was, also, he was also the former spokesman of the PDP at Tiku Abubaka 2023 Presidential Campaign Council in River State and will, in addition, discuss how far the River State lawmakers can go with the impeachment threat. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank, thank you very much for having me. Now, a couple of months back, when the president intervened, we do know that a number of agreements were signed between the governor and, of course, his predecessor, Mr. Yesom Wiki. I recall that the president directed that all matters instituted in the courts by the governor and his team should be drawn, dropped immediately. Also, all impeachment proceedings initiated against the governor by the State House of Assembly should be dropped, amongst you know, a number of other agreements. Can you, why do you think this impeachment threat is resurfacing again at this point? Well, um, we will look at the resolution from its beginning. Of course, it has been canvassed and alluded and agreed upon that that resolution up in issue did not have the backing of law, rather, it even went further to violate the separation of powers that exist between the tiers of government. And so whatever was done could be as much referred to as uh, palliative measures to ensure temporary peace. Whichever way that was, we saw in this governor the spirit of peace and to keep to that agreement. And so he has implemented most parts of that agreement. And of course, the lawmakers uh, did say, well, the, the embattled lawmakers, let me address them properly because uh, until a proper court of law defines their position, it is difficult to still uh, address them as lawmakers. So they, said that the governor has refused to present the budget of the state before them. And that's the reason they think the governor should be impeached. It is rather wrong for them to think in that wise, because they should rather be thinking about their own status to be properly defined by law so that whatever actions they take can be seen to be legitimate. As at today, there are a plethora of court cases against them having jumped ship from the political party that sponsored them to the parliament. And so it must be clear to them right now, they must have it in their own understanding that their defection is a matter of public interest. And a lot of groups had already taken to the courts as to define and determine their true position. I want to also quickly state that a few days ago, members of the PDP who were loyal to the uh, National Party and to the presidential candidate of 2023, who of course, by virtue of the actions of the former governor who violated uh, the party's constitution by promoting anti-party alongside with some of his colleagues that were christened G5, the party in River State has been a bit divided. But to the credit of the sitting governor, His Excellency Sassim Fubara, he has been able to galvanize everybody right now under one umbrella. And so most political gladiators and actors of the state and the very senior politicians and our elders have all come together 
to say look, the interest of River State is what is paramount. We are now going to work with this governor. I think these members of uh, embattled members of the River State House of Assembly and their paymaster must have been rattled by that unity that they have now seen in River State. And that is what is stimulating their pain, pushing them to begin to speak uh, in the manner that they have spoken. For them, whatever they do, I regard it as shadow fighting and shadow boxing because they do not have that legitimate power to threaten the governor with impeachment. They must also remember at all times that the powers that they seem to brandish was given to them by their constituents. And so have they even conferred with their constituents to know what is the mindset of the people who voted them to go and represent them in the House of Assembly. They seem to be working for one man right now and have forgotten their roots from where they were elected from. So the impeachment threat for me is null and void until their proper position is defined by a competent court of law if they still have the right even to legislate or even to contemplate such actions as impeachment. And that actually is a theory shared by uh, quite a few analysts that these embattled or uh, the defecting 26 seem to be creating a bit of a hornet's nest in a situation that became quite peaceful in the last couple of weeks. But with this new threat of impeachment and this new skirmish, how has that affected the governance uh, within River State in, in your own opinion? Well, the government of River State is firmly under the control of the governor, and uh, he has shown a whole lot of signal, very clear signal that he's poised to develop River State beyond boundaries. And of course, he has taken the welfare of the people so personally and has rejected the River State civil service. And uh, of course, River State's uh, has been a state that had a very large volume of the civil service. And so uh, such effect is also affecting the economy of the common people, especially the market women and the rest of it. And so um, for governance, I think governance is firmly under its control and the ship is going well. But beyond that, its ability to have reached out to stakeholders, its ability to, uh, to have welcomed uh, political stakeholders and repositioning them for effective participation in governance is one key thing that I think the governor has also done. And gaining such traction and political mileage is something that will definitely trigger an upheaval in the camp of his uh, ex a um, uh, 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 godfather and of course his uh, loyalist who of course has been singing in uh, discordant tones as against what the interest of River State is. So I think governance in River State is good. All that these uh, young men ought to do is to give peace a chance and allow the governor to concentrate on delivering on his campaign promises and the dividends of democracy to the people. There is so much work to do in River State in almost all the sectors. We are aware that the former governor did a lot of projects in River State. Yes, but beyond projects, there must be a system to sustain the projects. As of today, we have regional hospitals that were built, some not equipped by the former administration. Those regional hospitals are not working. We have the Peter Odili Cardiovascular Center. They are not working. They are under lock and key. Of course, we have the mother and child hospital. They are not working. They are under lock and key. We had a lot of the dilapidated primary and secondary schools. These are systemic issues that this present administration should be sitting down and looking at. And I think this present government is poised at that. We are also aware that he has started the process of health insurance for everybody in River State. These are all things we expected that this group of young men would have partnered with the 
uh, governor and ensure that he delivers on this in record time to the benefit of the people. And so that is his expectation. Anything outside of that is outside the interest of Rivers people. And it is so appalling that a group of people would hold, get to the press and say that they are making laws in the interest of River State. How? Even the laws that obtained the powers of the governor that they amended in a uh, few of the laws that were amended that denied the power of the governor to make certain appointments. There were no public hearing as to get the opinion of the people. So people shouldn't come out and say that they are working in the interest of River State. By the actions of the lawmakers, I think we should properly label them as the true enemies of the state. And that is the truth. Because their actions so far is all about truncating a democratically elected government headed by, some, by the governor of the state simply because the man is not doing the bidding of just one man. And so that's, that's the situation that we have here. Well, I'd like us to focus a bit on the Grand Cross Carpet, you know, that a number of lawmakers in River State indulged in when about 27 members who came into office on the platform of the PDP resigned from the party, you know, to join the APC. And of course, it's not just the lawmakers in River State that are guilty of this. We see a number of Nigerian uh, politicians cross carpet at will. I'm just wondering what this says about our democracy, you know, in River State, in Nigeria as a whole. Do these politicians have any ideology that guides how they carry out their duties? Or is it just about power and money and therefore forming strange and, you know, morally bankrupt alliances, you know, is not ruled out? Well, this, the answers to the questions you have posed is before you and I, from your own participation in politics as from the angle of the media, you can tell clearly that we are operating a democratic sit, a, a, a system that the parties involved has shown no clear ideology. You could imagine what happened in the Labour Party a few weeks ago, a party that a lot of young people were embracing because of the personality of Peter Obi, but you can see the way they have organized themselves, or rather disorganized themselves, because I won't call that an organization. Of course, for the PDP and the APC, it has always been marriage of convenience for a long time, because people will move at will to the next party, and then when it is not convenient for them, they return. Everyone, I mean everyone, can be said to be guilty of this crime. So, but that brings us to an understanding where we should begin to critically think and reevaluate our political system, whether what we are operating as at today is actually necessary as the system that will move this country forward. Because you can see, except for the fact that the APC had wanted to grab power at all costs, we saw something like an opposition during the period of President Jonathan. But today, they are in, uh, in power from Buari up till this date. The opposition that PDP ought to have played, my party, they have not shown clearly that they are ready to do, fight that opposition. And this is stemmed out of the question that you have asked. Does this party truly have an ideology? Because if your ideology is strong and you believe in it, that's exactly what is going to stir you up when you see the other parties derailing. But because it is all about power grabbing, you can see that there's no true conviction that makes people say, okay, I am a part of this party and I don't believe in what you do. So that's clearly the situation and it's unfortunate. So politicians need to sit down if we must continue to lead this country and lead this country to prosperity. That we must define what we believe in as parties and stick to them. And that's exactly what we speak to the conscience of Nigerians on which party they will want to support. Well, on that note, Dr. Nui Bubasa, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation here and for your time on Newsday. <laughs>